All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to use your PlayStation 4 controller on Steam with Windows. So the simple answer is, all you got to do is go to Steam, click on the little Steam button here in the upper left-hand corner, and click on Settings, and it'll bring open this menu, probably up here at the top under Account. Just go to this little left-hand sidebar and scroll down, until you find the word controller and give that a click. Now, what you wanna do here is you've got two options. You can connect your PS4 controller either with a cable, which I can't find mine right now, so I'm going to connect it using Bluetooth. And to do that, all I have to do is open up my Bluetooth settings. It helps if your computer has Bluetooth. Most wireless cards that connect to Wi-Fi have it built in these days. Sometimes they don't. If yours doesn't, that sucks. You can probably get a different one if you really need it. But cable works fine. But from here, I'm going to click on Add Bluetooth or Other Device. Click on Bluetooth. And on the controller, I'm going to simultaneously press and hold on the PlayStation logo button in the middle and the share button at the same time until the light on the back begins to flash. That's how you put it into pairing mode, and now it should show up inside of this list as a generic gamepad controller device thing. So I'll just click on wireless controller. It should pair it with my computer. It'll pop up and be like, yeah, we're setting up your device, yay! And then you should be good to go. So I'll just put this off to the side. And then from here, you see Larry's swanky PS4 controller because in a previous tutorial, I named this controller just because I could. And then inside of here, there's a few different settings that have appeared that I'll run you through. The first one is, do you want your controller to vibrate? Yes, no. The second one is, do you want to use Nintendo button layout configuration? So what this does is it just switches around the A and B buttons and the X and Y buttons on either the PlayStation or the Xbox controller. That's really nice for certain Nintendo games. I don't know how many of those you run into on Steam, but obviously there's enough that they added an option. If you want to enable that, you can. It's right here at the top. I will give a note that that doesn't always work for all games. Some games have their visual button layouts just hard-coded into the game. They're just a picture, and they don't change. So just be aware that that's not like a foolproof toggle on-off. It just works the way that it works. Next, we have the test device inputs button. When you click on this, this allows you to check to make sure that all of the buttons on your controller are actually showing up correctly and working. As you can see, I'm moving stuff around and it'll also kind of give you an idea if you've got like terrible stick drift or something. There's sometimes some options that you can mess with inside of the calibration settings for Steam to change that, but not, not terribly great but at least it lets you know if stuff's working correctly or if you need to get a different controller. So from there, next is the calibration. So here under calibration, you can change the dead zone of your different controller so that if you see a bunch of motion going on, you can kind of increase this dead zone so that your controller doesn't read that information until it's actually being moved by your physical fingers on the controller. You can also calibrate the gyro on the controller, which is going kind of crazy considering it's sitting on the desk, but whatever. Um, you can change the output for the rumble, and you can also change the LED color if you would like as well. And that changes the color of the light on the back. I like it blue though, but I could also go with like, I don't know, like an orange. That's kind of fun. We can exit out of there and that'll save your settings. Um, from here, you can use Guide Button Focuses Steam. It's uh, more of an external setting to like bring back open the Steam client. Um, you can also enable Steam input for Xbox controllers. I leave that off when I'm using an Xbox controller, but you can turn that on or off if you want. Um, this is actually something that's more important, is the PlayStation controller support. So by default, this is probably turned to off which means you can't really use your PlayStation controller on games at all right now. So what you want to do is you want to switch it to enabled in games without support. What that means is if you just set it to enabled, it would only work in games that have official support 
for your PlayStation 4 controller. They exist, there are, they are out there, but they are few and far between. If you set it to enabled in games without support, it'll work in games regardless. Now, if it's a game that doesn't support a PlayStation 4 controller, it means it's going to pretend that it's an Xbox controller. There's not really anything you can do about that, and there's not really a great way to force it to display a PlayStation controller on the screen, because if it could, that would mean it already supports the PlayStation 4 controller. So, long story short, set it to enabled in games without support. So next up it is the option, do you want to enable support for the Switch Pro controllers? Yes or no? Kind of unimportant if you don't have one, so you could probably leave that off. And then also enable Steam input for generic controllers. That would be for like the ones that kind of look like a PlayStation controller or kind of look like an Xbox controller from companies like Logitech, but they're not. Um, if you use one of those controllers, it can be handy. That'll allow you to control stuff in Steam uh, using the controller. If not, you can leave it off. And then you have the option of turning off controllers when you exit big picture mode. If you use big picture mode, and that's the only time you want your computer, your controllers to be able to do anything on your computer, I would totally recommend turning this on. If not, just leave it off. I personally don't really use big picture mode ever. Uh, except back when it was required to use these controller drivers, which isn't the case anymore. And then you can determine if you want your controller to turn off after you've been doing something else for a while and not touching it to save on battery. Uh, if you've got it plugged in, it probably doesn't matter. I usually have my controllers plugged in, so I set it to never, but it's completely up to you. It goes from five minutes to 120 minutes, your choice. And it also says never. And I probably would just leave it to never personally. Uh, down here, you've got the Xbox extended feature support driver. This allows you to use more advanced stuff that's built into the Xbox controllers. If you have an Xbox controller, I totally recommend installing that. It allows you to use extra different fancy sounding features. Otherwise, if you don't have an Xbox controller that has those features, it's kind of pointless. Then down here at the bottom, this is some non-game controller layouts. These are like the control schemes for using your controller in desktop mode or the guide button cord layout. These are completely fine in my opinion in default mode, but you can click on edit and you can edit how your controller behaves outside of games. I will do a more advanced tutorial on how to go through all of this stuff and what that means at a later date. But for the most part, most of the battle is over. If you plug it in, it shows up up here and you make sure to say, hey, make sure that my game is enabled in games without support. And then you're done. It should be working and you are good to go. I also have, for those who are interested, a discount code for NordVPN in the video description below. If you click on that, it gives you a discount on the service and it also gives me a kickback to help support the channel. And if you're not familiar with NordVPN, the whole notion of a VPN is it allows you to log in to a server somewhere else in the world that allows you to function as if you're using the internet from that location. It's great for disguising your internet traffic so people can't snoop on what you are doing. It helps to stay safe and secure for doing things like mobile banking on the go. And it's also nice for things like watching videos that are region locked if you've got things like Hulu. It's also got a few other handy details that are great for things like your phone. Like if you log into NordVPN on your phone, it's got a built-in ad blocker so that you don't get nasty ads spammed throughout all the different apps that you use. And in general, it's got some great security features that help keep you protected while you're online. So I totally recommend it. And uh, if you're interested, the link's in the video description below. And I'll catch you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And bye, everybody. And have a good one.